Hello? Dad. You know that father-son road trip we've always wanted to take? I haven't heard from you in a month. I rented this insane muscle car. You're gonna absolutely love it. Having you drive fast is an incentive? John, hey, goodbye. Bye. Dad. Hello? When's that kid gonna get a job? If there's one thing that the past year has taught me, it's to cherish every moment. Well, it ended up being a pretty day, Dad. It is gorgeous. The road of life is filled with wonder, discovery, and perhaps most important of all, laughter. <laughs> We're really doing it, Harry. You know where that's from? No. Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> that's one of my favorites. So, in the spirit of building new memories, I'm hitting the road with Papa Bananas himself, Regis DiVananzio. A road trip 39 years in the making. We're out of the big city, Pop. We're on the road. The destination, north. Up the most beautiful pavement on Earth. The Pacific Coast Highway in California. That is, of course, if Dad can handle my driving. What rock time. That wasn't my fault. That was him. This is nice because he's grown older and we have a lot more to talk about, a lot more experience. Well, let me tell you about my dad, Regis. Tough love, but uh, nothing but love. He's been an incredible role model over the years. No matter how old I get, he's one of the only people I'm still scared of. Oh, <laughs> man, leave the ball for me. This ostrich eats like me. We've taken a few very memorable road trips in the past. We've been wanting to do this for a while. I've always wanted to take a road trip up the California coast. It's gonna be fun. Our first stop is the quiet town of Solvang. This is like a hidden gem here. Even with all the people, there's a tranquility or you kind of can relax. Well, that's because you're not in the car with me anymore. That's right? true, That's true. why your stress level has subsided. This small Danish town, seemingly lost in time, bears a charm that is rooted in humble beginnings. Thank you very much. Thank you, Romy. Give it up. <laughs> this place is picturesque. And with over 120 vineyards, it's become a wine enthusiast's dream and a destination for all things Danish. Oh, this thing's incredible. Oh, it's amazing. You're eating like a pancake. It's called an apple skipper. Apple skippers are a great holiday treat in Denmark. You are in a mini Denmark. Back in 1911, three immigrants decided to come and pick up 10,000 acres in the San Valley and establish a Danish town. Solvang became kind of like the Danish capital of America. Why is it such a well-known place for wine? This is one of the greatest wine-growing regions ever. Right here in the central coast of California, you get really, really, really warm days and very cool evenings. It's a great way to make an awesome wine. You come here as if you were literally in Europe, like you're in Denmark itself. Where else can you get coffee, gelato, cheese, bakery, and lots and lots and lots of wine? I mean, I can't think of anywhere, can you? Other than the grocery store, that's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> Jason McLean has been an up and coming winemaker since 2016, when he decided to go all in on following his dreams of crafting wine deep in the heart of the Santa Inez Valley. So Pop and I are headed to Jason's tasting room in nearby Buellton to literally taste the fruits of his labor. Woo, now we're talking. Have a seat, come on Regis, let me show you some really Check stupid out good wine. this spot, man. This one's called Purpose Road. My dad and that bottle have something in common. They age gracefully. <laughs> Give it a, a nice big snuff. Put that schnoz in there, Pop. Come on, there you go. Very important thing when you're wine tasting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is don't just don't push it back. back. Put the wine on your right side mm -hmm. and the left side of your tongue. That's where all your taste buds are. Wow, soft and subtle like the two of us, Pop. I didn't quite get enough, can I? <laughs> <laughs> all right, time to uh, barrel taste. You excited about that? Oh, uh, yeah. When you make wine, you've got all kinds of barrels. You'll see older barrels and you've okay. got new barrels. This is a brand new French oak barrel that went in back in October. And, uh, a little caramel. 
Oh yeah. The oak in a barrel kind of comes out into the wine. Mm -hmm. I like to add these really cool items in it, which are little oak chips to help create the illusion, if you will, of brand new French oak. Oh wow. And this is how you make wine. I mean, it's like science, man. I think the coolest thing to do when you go wine tasting, try different combinations. So this is Cab Sauv. This one here is a Merlot. This one here is a Sangiovese. Mm -hmm. This one here is a Syrah. I'm a smoother, simpler guy. Okay. He's more big and bold. Yep. You want to go more me or more you? Oh, I'll try more you. So let's do a little less more low, a little more Sangiovese. Here we go. I'm impressed with this innovation. This is, this is how we make wines. Yeah, that's, that's excellent. Innovation. This is excellent. Innovation. This was chemistry, Father. It was. was. Science. No, I have to give attribution. Terrific. Jason. Yes, sir. You are the man. What's your cheers, Dad? Don't shoot at the guy in the foxhole with you. Oh, there right. you go. Hey, I'll drink to that. Me too, brother. This little thing we just threw together just now, I think it's the greatest blend for I your road trip. I think we've got something here. Road, road trip here. blend. Yeah, road the trip road blend. Road trip blend. Next stop, Moro Bay. After a relaxing day in Solvang, we're off to Morro Bay. This quaint, quirky California town is lined with surf shops, seafood restaurants, and is dwarfed by the massive historic landmark, Morro Rock, which sits quietly in the state preserve. The ecosystem of both land and sea are a huge focus for the community, and there's no better way to start experiencing that than on a kayak. Dad, is this a little bit better speed than in the Camaro? This is the speed you want? But I'm not going into the water. So where are we right now? We are at the north end of Morro Bay Harbor. We have sightseeing trips, whale watching, bicycling, you name it. So this is like an, an adventurer's paradise. I would say so. Mary, this large rock outcropping, I heard it was somehow volcanic in nature. So Morro Rock is a preserve for the peregrine falcons to nest. The way it was formed was a magma was forced through a vent in the Earth's crust, and before it erupted, it cooled and it became a volcanic plug. So it's an ancient volcano, but it didn't actually erupt. Oh, there goes a jellyfish. Oh, a jellyfish! We don't see this very often. It's an egg yolk jellyfish, you guys. This is a rare sighting? Yes! I've only seen this egg yolk jellyfish once in 30 years. Wow. Here's another one. When we see jellyfish, they often come in in groups. So we'll see numerous individuals of this type, and then we won't see them again. Dad, can we bring it home? Please? No. no. Please, Dad? <laughs> Mary, what are those sea lions doing over there? Those are two bulls fighting for territory on the rocky shoreline there. Wow. Dad, have you ever seen sea lions fighting and an egg yolk jellyfish on the same day? <laughs> I haven't even seen myself in one of these. <laughs> but the real stars of this ecological show are the sea otters, a Morro Bay tourist attraction. Wow, look at this little family otters. <laughs> look at them. <laughs> hey, guys. These cute, charismatic little critters populate the bay feeding off the abundant grass beds and seashells that exist under these waters. Morro Bay is pretty much permanent home to 35 to 50 southern sea otters. They choose Morro Bay to raise their family. It's not just the view, it's the food, it's the placid conditions mm -hmm. here, and it's the kelp and the eelgrass that Morro Bay offers them. We learned that that's one of the benchmarks for the health of the bay here is the eelgrass. And now environmentally, it's supposed to be coming back. Indeed, and what can we thank? The otters. So they're not just cute faces, Dad. They actually serve a purpose as well. While they may look lazy now, at night, these animals are busy diving underwater for food. Otters are one of the animals in the kingdom that actually use a tool every day. They pick up a rock, place it on their chest, take a crab, click, 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 click until it breaks. So during the day, it's important that they have plenty of rest, which folks like Sharon make sure they get. What are we looking for? We are looking at how many people are, how far from the otter, if they're talking loudly, because we have signs that say, shh, it's the nursery. Here we got a couple oh, of- Oh, Dad, uh, bogeys. Do 
I write paddle boats under the behavior? Actually, it's the stimuli oh, type. Oh, got it. What do you see, Pop? Well, I see them tumbling, and it looks like it's playing. I don't know. It isn't playing. It's actually grooming that fur coat. Um, forklift. Hey, buddy, maybe drive a little bit closer to the sleeping otters over here. Lady on TikTok, that is definitely a stimuli. We count cameras, too, as, as yep, a stimuli. <laughs> They look like they're living their best life right now. They look like they're in good health. Well, they are doing well here. We do have a very pristine bay. Well, I gotta say, Sharon, it has been educational to edifying. say the least. Edifying, edifying. From here on out, we are gonna do everything we can to uh, help these beautiful species continue to flourish here. So thank you for that. Every night we've been here, the sunsets have been absolutely spectacular. This place is serene and beautiful, and I couldn't pick a better stop along the way. Hi ho, Silver! Hey, Pop, are you enjoying our road trip yet? No. No? <laughs> We're riding off into the sunset, Pop. Crossing into Northern California, the scene changes. This is every postcard of the Golden State you remember seeing. It's here we pass the coastal town of Big Sur and through Carmel by the Sea before hitting the area's epicenter, Monterey. I don't think we could have picked a better day to uh, hit the old dusty trail, huh, Pop? This coast is just exquisite. Has my driving improved since we left? It's still a little fast. You want me to drive slower so we could spend more time together and could have more in-depth conversations. Yes. You can just go ahead and say it, Dad. You don't have to beat around the bush. Yeah, I'd like to have the top up and have it quiet and listen to Mahler's Fourth Symphony. Welcome to Big Sur. California was a crown, Monterey would definitely be one of its jewels. And while the area is known for its rugged, scenic coast, at the ocean's edge, you'll find a placid harbor where the air smells salty and the fishing boats fill the docks. So John, you are the harbor master here at Monterey Harbor, correct? Yes. Monterey is almost like a vacation destination, right? But the heart and soul of Monterey really is blue collar, right? Working class. Yeah, absolutely. By and large, most of the people fishing out here are dads and sons and yeah. daughters fishing I mean, together. One of these family fishing teams is Captain Calder and his son, Miles, who agreed to give us a taste of what it's like to live and work in Monterey. All right, Dad, what do you say? Little father-son fishing trip? John. I didn't go into the Navy for a reason. I'm afraid of water. <laughs> Look, it's nice and toasty out. The sun's out. I'm going to trust the captain. I don't trust you, but I'm, I'm going to trust the captain. <laughs> right. You're in good hands. Whoa! Hey, Dad, don't worry. You got a dog here to save you. <laughs> oh, who's that? So we've got a couple hundred pounds of fish right now. What would you say the biggest load you've ever brought back was? Um, probably around 5,000 pounds. 5,000? How'd you fit that all in this boat? Uh, you're sinking slowly. <laughs> you just have to keep moving. So the fish that you catch here, how long is the journey that they make? We sell a lot of sable fish to Japan, but all these fish today are gonna be for the local markets. Demas, what are we gonna be doing here today? So today we're gonna fillet a fish. This is actually from yesterday's That's cat. That's right, you cut close to the gills. Okay. Bring it down, you bring it over like that. Mm -hmm. Take the skin off. You make that look easy, yeah. man. And then we have a fillet. You can do the other side. Okay. Yeah, I feel it right here. Oh, I got it now. Oh shit, I left a lot of meat on, huh? We're gonna put them side by side to see which one looks better, okay? Demas, what's that over there? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did a good job. Look at her. Yeah, look at that. Look, look at the, what's wrong with you, bro? Jeez, man, I can teach you a thing or two. Yeah. See, there you go. Look at that. Wow, Dad. We're going to take this to the kitchen. Thank you. We're cook it, and we met you at the table. You're a right guy. That's all he's been talking about, man, is, right, eat, is eating you. fish. Dad, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Oh. We're going to put this right in front of this. Oh, man. That's not going to be there for very much longer. This is a local Monterey Bay rockfish. Here is Monterey Bay salmon. Come on, Pop. Take a little bit of that. That's huh? cute. Huh? <laughs> a little slice of heaven there, Pop. I'm not leaving. 
I've never been to Monterey before, but it's exceeded all my expectations. I'm just blown away by how much the people of Monterey work together, support each other, and this like symbiotic relationship between the ocean, the fishermen, the restaurants, the community. Cheers, you guys. Sea Harvest Calder. To Calder and Miles. Great fishermen. Cheers. Cheers. We've had an amazing road trip. We've gone kayaking, we've gone fishing, we've gone otter spotting. Dad, put this into perspective with the rest of the moments that we've had. Oh, this is, it's make the whole trip worthwhile. I really enjoy Monterey. Now, Dad, I know you've been a little critical of my driving because I've been driving a little too conservatively. We're gonna have to speed it up a little bit to get to San Francisco in time. John, you just spilled all that f***ing cream, man. Take it off like that. Last stop, San Francisco. Well, this sure is a pretty drive, huh? Well, you need a little forest in your life. North of Monterey, through the Redwood Forests, we head to our final stop on this trip, the golden city of San Francisco. 2000 then was the last time we went to San Francisco together. Right. We took a picture by the Golden Gate Bridge. The Presidio. But well, we made some good memories then, Pop, and we're gonna make some good memories now. Arguably one of America's most European cities, San Francisco's complex diversity is both largely spread out while maintaining its original cultural neighborhoods. San Francisco provides a fusion of cultures and cuisines that is difficult to find anywhere else. And who better to help us navigate this culinary metropolis than the man who taught me how to appreciate food, Food Network's very own Tyler Florence. On our food tour of San Francisco today, we're gonna kick it off with breakfast. Authentic Chinese dim sum in the oldest dim sum house in the country. Can't wait. We're here at Hang Ha. It survived 101 years of, you know, war, bubbles and bursts in the economy in San Francisco. This place is just amazing and the food is fantastic. First course, gentlemen, their legendary barbecue pork bun. Oh, look at Remember, that. Right? He's in ecstasy. Oh. Dad, did you eat the entire thing? I did. You did? <laughs> Originally formed as a haven for Chinese immigrants during the California Gold Rush, Chinatown is a leader in defining Chinese American cuisine and is even the birthplace of the fortune cookie. Walking down the streets of food stalls and street vendors, it's clear why this place shines as one of San Francisco's most popular attractions. Wow. That's one of the most delicious pastries I've been all over the world. This is remarkable. It's an American treasure, this place. We just took a time machine and moved to Italy. This is uh, North Beach, the heart and soul of the Italian American community. And we're standing in front of Molinari. Can you smell the garlic? Is that garlic? It smells like good times. They make all of their salamis award winning, incredibly delicious. And sometimes I'll just get lost with what he's slicing. And literally, he'll just like feed me small little pieces of like the most unbelievable stuff. I think he's about uh, to cry. Bringing him back to being a kid. This is the most authentic Italian sandwich I've ever had. I almost had this thing finished. <laughs> you guys are talking, I'm, it's, I'm it's eating. It's a delicious sandwich. Outside of its delicious cuisine, San Francisco stands out as a shining beacon for cultural revolution. Local coffee shops serve some of the most influential modern writers and philosophers, paving the way for beat poets and the counterculture movement. But of all these social transformations, the gay rights movement seems to hold a special place in the city's heart. In 1973, San Francisco smashed barriers with the election of Harvey Milk, the first openly gay man to hold public office in California. So our next stop along our uh, journey through San Francisco is uh, here at the, in the Castro District at Harvey's. It's the indelible things in the history that wind up being the identity of a neighborhood that carries it forth into the future. It's also all the struggle. It seems like in San Francisco, there's been different iterations as generations went on about different groups and cultures that were persecuted against. Yeah. But it's being that champion first, it's being that trailblazer, that's the tough position to be in. And this town has always risen like a phoenix out of the ashes. It's always found a way to do that. When you come to San Francisco, it encourages you to contribute to the success of the city. Yep. So we built Wayfair Tavern, but I think we're killing it. 11 years strong, and this is what we do. The fried chicken, it's like, it's really, really, really special. This is not flattery, this is description. This is the best chicken I've had. <laughs> 
cheers to you guys. Congratulations on a dream trip with your dad. I would encourage anybody to take some time out of their schedule and go do that, right? Because time is short. I agree, man. Cheers. To a perfect bookend, Pop, huh? You're a good boy, John. Hey, yeah. I'm a chip off the old block. It was fun having conversations, catching up, and reminiscing while driving up that Pacific Coast Highway. It's going to be one of the highlights of our relationship. This is gonna be one of, if not the most memorable trips um, either one of us has ever taken, and the fact that we get to do it together is beyond words and is absolutely priceless. Take my hand, don't be afraid to show me Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. For more, subscribe to First Look and come with me on all my adventures around the world. Who am I kidding? I'm probably sitting at home watching Netflix or playing Xbox. Either way, what are you waiting for? Just hit subscribe already.